Welcome to 51 The Trace in Clapham in London. I'm Charles. And I'm Rupert. And uh, we've been here for 35 years. I hope that you'll enjoy this short virtual tour and that we can welcome you for real later when we can all move about again. I was incredibly lucky. I moved here and wanted a flat with a balcony. And a year after I moved, the main part of the garden came up for auction. And we had wonderful neighbours who wanted a tennis court but asked if anybody wanted a garden. And I said I wanted a garden. And they didn't bid against me and I bought it. But it wasn't a garden then by any stretch of the imagination. It was a patch of wasteland, wasn't it, really? It, it yeah. had been completely abandoned. The house had been split up into flats, I, I think probably before the war. There were brambles from the house all the way back to the end, end of the garden, um, which I took out and not being experienced at that point, I sieved the whole garden by hand, not realising that the worms would um, send up the stones more from stones. lower down. More stones and more stones. <laughs> So that was, where, that was where I started. I think my precise approach to architectural work, which is crucial, is left behind. And it's all about the planting. Except for the geodetic dome, of course. <laughs> That's the architectural nod, I think, isn't yes, it, really? Yes, yeah. which I gave Rupert a long, long yeah. time ago. Which is a great place to bring on seedlings and seeds, and, and we bring on some of our exotica there. And then, in quite an old-fashioned way, uh, we bring on plants that we can bring into the house in the winter, so we have um, flowering plants in winter. We're making this film because we normally open for tulips, and we have 2,500 tulips, all of which come from blooms. I've always grown tulips supplied by Blooms and the first year we grew them I said to Rupert I now embraced that they won't look like Chelsea Flower Show. Every year they do. They, mm. they are amazing. The, so the tulips are really the principal thing at this moment. And the tree peonies. And the tree peonies. Which are looking um, quite fantastic. Which is a be beautiful one in the main garden which is uh, Ringpo and then the Judas the tree which is out right now of course yep. being the Easter tree. Uh, looking really fantastic, and, and early echiums, which are just showing now. And as I th think the echiums, are, they, when, they're, they're with, they're, when they're in full flower, they're really like um, plant beehives. They're just so attractive to the bees. They just buzz all, all day long. And we're uh, surrounded by Coronilla glauca subspecies Valentina, which is amazingly scented and flowers from February until May. And then behind me, the honeysuckle Anna Fletcher, which was bred by a great friend of mine, and uh, there are very few of those around, and she gave me it about five years ago, and it just loves it here. It's quite a fantastic flower. Really lovely, isn't it? Beautiful, very beautiful. Yeah. As you can see, I'm, I'm very much a plantsman, and we started out with no paths at all, and then I realised I was endlessly trampling the same bit of ground, and I thought that it might be practical to start having paths. And when we didn't open the garden, the paths really led nowhere. And then when we started opening 13 years ago, I realised that we needed a route to go right round the garden so that there wasn't a dead end and a bottleneck. Um, so we added uh, a second lot of steps um, from the mound. Just as well, because we once were open and we had 700 visitors in one afternoon. So <laughs> and we certainly needed a circular route then, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Amazing day. Yeah. Um, on the on the top of the mound is a, is a bull which was um, made by Hugh Kelly when he was at St Martin's. It was his degree piece and it's made of electrical conduit. It's uh, made in steel. So um, naturally we're really hugely disappointed that we can't uh, open our garden as normal because we really love having everyone in to look at the garden and of course for the National Garden Scheme such a standingly good cause. But uh, with any luck we might, who knows, we might be able to have an opening in July um, and certainly feeling that then we'll be opening in September and as soon as we possibly can then we're going to have pop-up openings so that uh, keep an eye on the website because we, as soon as we can we're going to open our gates and welcome people in and there's always something to look at in this garden thanks to you. <laughs>